Chrysler's PT Cruiser. My goodness, do you see everything on this channel or what? It's supposed to be about cowboys, but it's still about history. So you might have seen in the background, Helen's PT Cruiser. Or as my eldest boy likes to call it, the PT Loser. So if you know anything about Chrysler PT Cruisers, you're probably going to say it's a lemon. And that's because they have developed a shocking reputation. And this is a thing where people just like to bad mouth stuff. And so what happened was, let's start 1991, Chrysler in America, they decide they want to build a small, compact, super cheap, economical, little four-door car for the masses. So what they do is they come up with the Chrysler Neon, a little two-liter, four-cylinder, four-door sedan. Cheap as chips because that's what it's supposed to be. This is not supposed to be a Cadillac. At the time, they have an amazing group of designers that are so innovative, an amazing group of designers, and they have just outside the envelope. So they come up with a Plymouth Prowler and all sorts of other funky, groovy, hot roddy type ideas for vehicles, which is great. And one of the things they come up with, one of the designs they come up with, can we back up just for a minute, Mark? Is the PT Cruiser. So when they come up with this idea of a retro, hot roddy looking vehicle, they think, but how can we make this car that's going to sell in limited numbers? I know. We'll have this fancy flash body. And we will just put this fancy flash body on our already being made cheap Chrysler Neon. So, so when I told you that that cheap Neon came out in 93, the PT Cruiser didn't come out till 2001. So what that meant was the engine, the running gear, the gearbox, the whole thing was already eight years old in 2001 when the PT came out. Now the PT sold in hotcakes. They could not make them fast enough. 2000. So my wife loved the car. I really liked the look of it too. I thought it was a great looking car. So what we have here, they came out in 2001, already running on an eight year old platform when they were brand new come out and what happened was in 2004 they were going to bring out a facelifted model we're going to have some changes some different wheels painted bumper bars glitchy it up a little bit and and we went in to buy this brand spanking new and Helen loved the purple color mulberry I think it's called and what we ended up buying was the run out of the first model, a 2003 model, but by then the factory had started doing some things to it that were going to be on the next model in 2004. So this car you see here, we've had it for 20 years and it has been a love-hate relationship. Had it for 20 years and when we bought it brand new it was an eight-year-old platform. So why do you hear these stories about PT cruisers being such lemons. They were great to start with when they were new, but you had to look after them and you had to maintain them. And one of the faults that the vehicle developed, and here you go if you've got a PT cruiser, or if you ever had one, this might be when you go slap your hand on your forehead, is that all? And that's because they have a sensor on the end of the camshaft, and that sensor basically puts the car into limp mode. So you're driving along fine and suddenly the car goes into limp mode. Limp mode is when there's a problem with the engine, drops the revs, drops the power, but at least allows you to get to a service station, a mechanic or home. And so these cars would unexpectedly go into limp mode. So when that happened with this car, which it did, I was driving, I was out in the country, driving, and suddenly 110 kilometers an hour, Beep, 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 on the dash, no power, pull to the side of the road, switch it off. Hmm, what are we going to do here? Switch it back on. No problem. Problems. No, it's fixed. So anyway, came home, looked at the internet, and yes, this is the sensor on the end of the camshaft. It's intermittent. 
How am I to run for another six months without doing it again? Maybe a year, but it would happen out of the blue. When might it happen? Middle of the night, pouring rain. So a lot of people, as soon as this problem happened, they take it to your average Joe mechanic. Half the time he'd say, there's nothing wrong with this car because he couldn't find anything wrong because it was the intermittent problem. So people would get so sick of it, they'd sell their car, the prices plummeted, no one wanted it. Hence my boy, my eldest son, saying, it's the PT loser. The reality is, if you look after it, they're a fine car. They can be reasonably economical. They're a big, heavy car, front-wheel drive. But that's the story of the PT Cruiser, how it came to be, why now they've got such a terrible reputation, and really it's a very cheap and easy fix once you know what the problem is the cam sensor and so 20 years old and how do you bring yourself to sell something you bought new you know it's a wonderful thing to go into a dealership buy a brand new car and have some fun in it <laughs> i get too emotionally attached to everything is that true you think Hey, okay. is that true, do you think? Oh, temper. No, that was a fly. He stomped then because it was a fly. So there's the story of the PT Cruiser. And of course, PT Cruiser ended in 2010. They don't make them anymore. And one of the saddest things, of course, is that I have comprehensive insurance in all my cars, but they've got such a terrible reputation. But uh... So there you go, the story. So there you go, a bit unexpected. A brief story on the Chrysler PT Cruiser 2001 2000 to 2010. Only ever one model because it was facelifted a couple of times. It went to a slightly bigger engine. It went to different wheels. But they only ever count it as one model. 2001 2010. The mighty retro PT Cruiser. Cheers, till next time.